Have you ever heard of the rubber band effect on the iPhone? This is a UI pattern that kind of shows you when you've gotten to the end of some page of content. Now, if you reach the end and the page just didn't respond to your finger, you actually wouldn't know if the device was broken or if you had reached the end, there'd be no way to tell. So the rubber band lets you know that the device is still interpreting your gesture and responding to it, but it's just this subtle animation that kind of slows down the rate of scrolling to let you know that there's no more content and that you've scrolled to the end. Now this principle of always providing feedback to the user is one of the reasons the iPhone has always felt like such a fast and responsive device. So in this episode, we're gonna be applying the rubber banding technique to our image cropper, and we're gonna take it from this, where we left off last time, to this, where we stop all movement, to this, where we have this really nice rubber band effect and the user always has that responsive feel no matter if they're dragging it outside of the legal bounds of the crop. So let's jump right into the code and get started. So first I wanna tidy up just a few things. In the last episode, we used this animations ref to keep track of our animations so that we could call stop on them right here. But the maintainer of Frame or Motion actually told me there's a better way to do this. So we can actually delete this use ref right here. And if we come down to where we were setting it, uh, we can replace this with just our two calls to animate. And then right now we'll just comment out these two calls to stop. So if we do this and come back to our demo, we'll see that we've lost the cancellation behavior and now it's kind of has that sticky feeling to it again. And the way we can fix this is instead of using this, we can actually replace both of these lines with calls to x.stop and y.stop. And now if we come and try this out, we'll see that our image is totally responsive again. All of our animations are cancelable. And uh, that's just a nice little convenient method that comes right off of these motion values. So we didn't even need to actually track those ourselves. We can just call stop just like that. Now, the last little bit of tidying I wanna do here is to just change the transition we're using uh, for our animation. Right now, we're just using the default and it has this kind of springy behavior. This is just the default transition that comes with Framer Motion. And it works well in a lot of cases, but in this case, it's not quite appropriate. So we can come down to where we're calling animate and just pass in a third property right here to kind of tweak our animation. So we're going from a spring to a tween with these kind of easing and duration values. And now if we check this out, it's got this kind of pleasant, you know, smoother, simpler transition, which I think is more appropriate for uh, our use case here. Okay, so we're ready to start on the actual rubber band part of our demo here. And the idea is, you know, right now when we drag this, the user can just drag the image kind of everywhere. We don't actually stop them and we adjust it after the fact. We wanna make it so that we actually stop them from dragging it once the user hits the bounds of this container with the image. And, you know, if we come to our maybe adjust image function, we're actually doing a lot of this calculation already since you know, we actually needed those bounds when the user let go and we ran this function. So I'm going to start just by copying all this code and coming back to our drag handler. And let's just paste this in right here. Now, if we look at this, uh, we see that this logic says if the left side of the image is greater than the left side of the container, then we want to set the X value to uh, this property right here. So if we look at our image, we'll see that the crop starts out at zero. And as we move it left, it gets lower and lower until it gets to negative 352. So the lowest value that our crop X can be is negative 352, and the greatest value it can be in this case is zero. So that means that this value right here is actually the max X uh, that we can ever crop. And that means that uh, this value right here, in the other case, if we've moved the image too far to the left, is actually our minimum X. So that's really what these values mean. And in the same way, this value right here is the maximum Y, and this one is the minimum Y. So that's what all these values are. And again, right now, we're not really restricting our user's ability to drag, but what we could do is something like this. If the new X value here is greater than the max X, then let's just set it to the max x. Otherwise, if dx is less than the minimum x, let's set it to the minimum x, and otherwise we'll just set it to the actual value. And so now, uh, with any luck, we can still drag this like this, but if we hit the edges, it, it actually stops. 
And so now you can see we have this kind of behavior here, which is as if we didn't have any rubber banding or didn't give the user any feedback at all. We just kind of hit the edge and it stops just like that. And we could do exactly the same thing here for Y. And now our user is basically restricted in every dimension. And you know, if we zoom in here, this is gonna work just the same. You kind of get to the edge and nothing happens. So this is kind of simulating the pre-rubber band effect UX here. And we can see that, again, it just, it doesn't feel that good. If you were to just use this, it just feels like something's broken. So to start implementing our rubber band function, I'm gonna go ahead and replace these two uh, with this. And we're calling this new dampen function, which we haven't written yet. And we're passing in the values as well as these minimums and maximums that we just calculated. So now we can come down to the bottom of our component here. And I'm just gonna paste in this dampen function, which does exactly the same thing that we were doing kind of in line above. So if the value is bigger than the max, we just return the max. If it's smaller than the min, we return the min. Otherwise, we just return the original value. But now this is gonna give us a nice little space to actually implement our dampening. So the basic idea with dampening is just to say that if the value is greater than our max, instead of just returning the max, we actually want to calculate the difference between the max and whatever pixel value the user has dragged to. And then instead of adding that to the max, we just want to kind of shrink it by some factor and then add that to the max, to the edge. And that way it kind of will result in this rubber band effect. So for our max here, uh, that might look something like this. We'll go ahead and grab the extra, which again is the difference between the value and the max. And then we'll dampen this using some function. Uh, in our case, we're just gonna use the square root and we just wanna make sure it's the right sign whether the extra is, is negative or positive. And that's gonna give us this nice decay. And then we go ahead and add that to the max, return it, and uh, let's see what that looks like. So uh, there you can see it. When we're moving within the ranges, it's normal. But as soon as we get to the edge, you can see I'm still pulling just as fast, but then we have this decay. So that's kind of how that works. And you can see, again, it's, it's this really nice effect. It's a little subtle with just this. So I, I kind of uh, use this right here as a way to adjust the factor. And if I multiply it by two, you can see it's a little less aggressive. You know, you can multiply it by three and just play around with this until it gets to something that you like. But I like the way two feels. And uh, yeah, that's basically the idea. So we could go ahead and do the other side. And now, check it out. We've got our rubber band effect that we wrote ourselves that we have complete control over. And you know, it works exactly as we expect because we've already done all this calculation, even if we zoom in or anything like that. And so uh, that is really nice. It, it just feels so much better. It honestly feels like something you know, in a native app and uh, our little cropper here is just always responsive. And yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with, with how this turned out. So uh, let's do one last touch before we go. I'm gonna come up here to our image and right below it, I'm gonna paste in this kind of grid of thirds here. And this is just using some Tailwind classes, but this is gonna give our user a little bit of a guide here to see how their crop is positioned. Now on iOS, uh, this grid actually only shows once the user starts either pinching or dragging. So let's come up here to the top of our function and we'll drop in some new React state. And then in on drag, we'll grab the dragging property here. This is a Boolean that React use gesture exposes. And we can just call set is dragging so that we can track that value in React. And then similarly, we'll grab pinching and then call set is pinching. And now we can come back to our grid right here and just drop a little expression that says if we're dragging or pinching, go ahead and make the opacity 100. Otherwise, we'll hide it. And now if we check this out, we have this really nice behavior where once we start dragging it, that grid kind of shows up to help us out. I just love how easy it is to use React State alongside this library. You know, again, we're delegating all this kind of complex hard stuff to Framer Motion and React Use Gesture. It's making sure to use Request Animation Frames so this stuff renders at 60 frames a second. But if we want to add little uh, touches and flourishes to our UI like this, we'll just default to using good old React State and render it the same way we render everything else to keep it very simple and kind of within the React paradigm. So I just love uh, how this works. 
And one final touch now that we have this is dragging state. Let's come up to here where we're setting the cursor to be grab. That shows this little hand right here. And let's replace this with an expression. And we'll say if we're dragging, we'll go ahead and make it cursor grabbing. Otherwise, it'll be cursor grab. So now, as soon as I start dragging, you see that little cursor change. The grid shows up. And uh, yeah, this is, this is looking and feeling really nice. So uh, with that, our image cropper is done for now. If you have any more questions or anything you'd like to see from it, let me know. But if you are using React, you know, I really recommend checking out React Use Gesture and Framer Motion. They're just really fun libraries. They have great APIs. They're really well maintained and they're just a lot of fun to use. So I hope you learned a thing or two in that series. Uh, I'm excited to get into some new content in my next video. But for now, that's it for our image cropper series. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.